Hey guys, Burton Lynn, Fox Sports Next. I'm here with the publisher of Longhorn Digest, Kevin Flaherty. We're here at Pro Day where 14 guys from the Longhorns football team are competing right here to impress some of the coaches and scouts from teams all over the nation and the NFL. Now, today's been a pretty long day for these guys. They started around 10.30. It's about 1 o'clock. They're still going. Who really needed today to really improve their draft stock and to stand out? Hey guys, I'm Britton Lynn and this is the 60 Second Drill. In 60 seconds, I'll fill you in on what's going on in Crimson Tide Athletics. In a rivalry that dates back to 1899, the Tigers now hold a 27-20 to 20 series advantage over the Aggies. You also had another incredible experience going to Pasadena, winning a national championship. What was that like? Your former team, the Saints, right now they're being investigated for the bounty. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are your feelings on all that? You know, I, I, think, I think it's wrong. <laughs> So it happens everywhere. This is a big issue. It's really hurting players. What is your solution to the problem? How do you stop this? Well, um, my this guy is a great competitor, and I talked with his coach, David Wetzel, this year, and I said, what about him can we not see in his highlights? What are the intangibles? Thanks for joining me today on the SB's red carpet. I'm Burton Lynn for ESPNU. Despite the loss, Alabama still has three more SEC opponents left on their schedule. Reporting from Baton Rouge, I'm here at the Kirk Herb Street National Kickoff Classic in Cowboys Stadium. Now, we already spoke about game one a little bit. We're going to move on to game two. But these coaches, players, and fans aren't trying to make a fashion statement. They're trying to make a difference. He could play any position on the field. Not only is he the quarterback for his high school, but also he plays cornerback and has gotten two interceptions this season. So, extremely talented player. Alabama's home win streak is tied for the second longest in school history. And the Crimson Tide players all agreed that there's no place they'd rather play than in sweet home Alabama. Despite playing behind a Heisman Trophy winner, Richardson said he's learned a lot from Mark Ingram and is willing to do whatever it takes to help the team. Jackie Trana does a lot of damage in the batter's box, but it was a jewelry box that started her career with the Tide. Trina committed to Alabama by giving Coach Murphy the box. The Alabama women's golf team is ranked number six in the country. Let's take a look at how head coach Mick Potter inspires his players. The Alabama Crimson Tide might have clinched their 13th national championship victory, but for many of these seniors, they're coming home with a lot more than just a national championship ring. Thanks, Rob. I'm here in the student section in the Alabama-Florida basketball game, getting in on all the action. Later on tonight, I'll be talking to Mark Ingram. We've shown you the damage across the south after last week's deadly tornado outbreak, but tonight we're taking you to one of the areas hit hardest by the storm. The 33's Britton Lynn gives us a look. An area where the Alabama tornado hit particularly hard was the low-income Alberta neighborhood, just down the street from the University of Alabama campus. It's, it's just devastating. I saw a lady standing up when we first came in. She had a sign saying, do you know who I am? She don't even know she, who she is. There's something that you would see that happened in other places, but not here. My house was just shaking. It's, it's, it was real bad. There's currently 1,900 National Guard soldiers stationed in Alberta. Right now, they're expected to be working here 7 to 30 days or longer if needed. I got the phone call at 10.30 at night from my commander saying that we were mobilizing out here. Since we've been here, we've done 24-hour ops every night staying up all night. We had an hour of sleep our first night, um, helping out with the families, with their houses taken down, pulling checkpoint security. We've seen bodies. We've seen people starving. The majority of the people here have lost everything. This marking is on all the houses here in Alberta. That top line is the date the police respondents came and checked the house. The next line is the time they came. This V means that it's verified and that zero bodies were found, luckily, in this case. And the P over here is a code that the respondents use when they check the house. It's hard to believe that this is one of the few houses standing in Alberta. Although the area is off limits to the public, hundreds of volunteers are handing out needed supplies and raising spirits in this broken community. Right. I'm just going out here. I got about two, two, three cases of water, some sandwiches. I'm just handing them out to people who need them. Um, that's all I'm trying to do out here, just make it a little better out here. I tell them to keep their head up, keep up hope, man. This is not, not the end. You can only go up from here. 
City Council official Kip Tyner said it's likely to be four to six weeks before power is restored in Alberta and years before homes and businesses are rebuilt. Reporting from Alberta, Alabama, Britton Lynn, The 33 News. Well, 14 seems to be a lucky number for Alabama after the Crimson Tide won their 14th national championship. 14 guys from the team competed in Alabama Pro Day in front of coaches and scouts from all 32 teams. We spoke with some of the guys after Pro Day to see how it went. You know, growing up, that's all I wanted, you know, to have the chance to play in the NFL and for, for, to have the opportunity to go to the first round with as much talent as you have in the draft, you know, especially this year, that, uh, that definitely means a lot to me. I feel like I did a really good job. You know, a lot of people, uh, at first at the combine, there was question about my, about my weight and uh, about my speed. And uh, I, feel like I, I feel like I proved a lot of people that, I, that I, you know, even though I'm a big guy, I can still move. And uh, as, as far as, uh, far as today go, um, you know, a lot of people want to see me in coverage, see me open my hips and run around. I feel like I did a really good job in that, too. Although Dante Hightower didn't participate in the 40-yard dash at Pro Day, he ran a 4.71 in the three-cone drill and a 7.53 in the shuttle. Head coach Nick Saban spoke on the captain's versatility and unique intangibles. I, don't, I think that he's done really done it all here. I mean, he's played. He's got a lot of diversity as a player because he's played a lot of different positions. I think he's going to offer the same thing at the next level: inside backer, nickel backer, defensive end odd rusher um, so you know there's not very many other things that you can do and I think he does all those things very well I think he's very smart he has leadership qualities um, so and I think people are starting to recognize that the more and more they're around but Hightower wasn't the only impressive athlete at Pro Day. Cornerback Dre Kirkpatrick, who's expected to be a top 15 draft pick, was also turning heads. I feel like I did a pretty good job man you know um my size, you know, that was a big question. Could I, could I move with the size? And, you know, I feel like that was one of the goals. And, you know, I feel like that was something that I needed to go out here and prove to people. And, and I feel like I did a great job of trying to achieve it, not achieving, just trying to achieve it. And, you know, the only thing I can do is be, get my best. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, to me, it's really not all about money. It's all about, you know, bettering myself and the goals that I want to reach, you know. And, but getting that money, that means pretty much to me just, Go out there and get it. You know, everything's on the line. Just try to achieve what you want to achieve. So that's pretty much what it means to me. The reigning national champion spoke on how playing under a successful team and one of the nation's top coaches has prepared them for the next level. We we definitely have a lot of exposure out here. There's a ton of teams out here. You know, we got so many guys that are uh, a lot of guys going high in the draft. A lot of players can get drafted. So uh, you know, I think that definitely helps because you know you're gonna have you know the most exposure you can have uh, with some of the players we have here so uh, you know I, def I think it uh, definitely helped out a lot. We're always pleased that we have guys drafted and getting opportunities uh, to have a career at the next level and obviously if you're first round draft pick that's going to enhance your chances of doing that. Of course playing with Coach Saban I mean I feel like he's the best coach in the nation and he runs a pro system defense and a pro system team so you're always going to get an opportunity when you come in and play. One of the NFL prospects here at Pro Day who performed considerably well was cornerback Phelan Jones, who had a 37 and a half vertical, weighed in at 5'10", 199, and ran a 4.65 in the 40. Reporting from Tuscaloosa, Alabama for Fox Sports Next, I'm Britton Lynn.